I've had Reiki treatments and I've also had Qi, uh, mm -hmm. qi treatment from a Chinese Qigong master. And uh, the energy feels distinctly different. Different. Um, personally, I feel that Reiki is, uh, is much less powerful than Qi. Um, mm -hmm. There's some people who practice both. Mm -hmm. um, qi uh, is used in martial arts. You know, the mm -hmm. guys that break the bricks with their heads or the boards with their hand, they're they're not. They're not and using their force. hands. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. that too. Um, they're uh, they're using their chi energy. Um, but then when it's actually used for something like that, a sudden burst of it is called jing. Um, I see. And the author of this, uh, the yeah, we, this one here. Actually, we have, well, we this have one too. This, still this one. Yeah, we have a second book. Yeah, um, Paul Dong, the author of this book, also ha practices what's called empty force, where he can just use his hand and he can make people fall down. Um, which is similar to each one, which is a technique that's been practiced for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. This individual here, for his entire life, remained completely undefeated. He had boxers, mm -hmm. he had martial artists from all over the world challenge him, and nobody could even physically touch him because mm -hmm. he, his energy was so strong, he would just brush him aside. And, uh, and hold him up. Uh, what's, yeah. his, what's his name? I can't see on the other side of the book. Does oh. he have a well, this book is by Jan Dieperslut. Um, and it's this gentleman here that he right. was making reference to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still working on this book, but these are all each one masters. Mm -hmm. um, and that philosophy, the technology, can be traced all the way back to uh, ancient India, mm -hmm. to northern India and the Nepal region. Um, and that's actually the you know, the most powerful martial art is one where there's there's really no fighting because you're just able to Even the eliminate the conflict. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that is the highest level of development. Now, the practice of Qigong um, enhances psychic ability in a lot of cases. Many of the super psychics in China develop their ability only after practicing Qigong and reaching a certain level of development. Mm -hmm. um, some people are born with it. Um, some people develop it through Qigong. Some people also can be hypnotized to have the ability. So they call oh, that it. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, this is a little out left field here, mm -hmm. but supposing you have children, uh, would, would you object to your children being one of those? No, I think it's a wonderful ability. And it, wonderful, and it, no? it, I mean, it, becoming a psychic or developing unusual abilities can have its complications. There's the right. emotional aspect of it. There's the, especially in the American culture where it's treated as something wrong. Mm -hmm. um, as a child, Lynn Buchanan was very psychokinetic, and one of his tricks that he would do as a kid is he would hold a, a pie pan, a metal pie pan, and he would make stones fall through the metal. <laughs> and one day um, he was demonstrating for a little friend of his, and uh, her father was a preacher, and the preacher grabbed him and threw him to the ground and tried to perform an exorcism on the spot with yeah, him. So yeah, he, no so way. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a lost oh, story. Oh wow! Yeah. So what a shame. He uh, he lost the ability after that. Yeah. Um, the negative reinforcement is one of the reasons why we don't have more psychic children in in this yeah. country. Uh, whereas in China, it's encouraged. It's it's recognized. It's um, validated. It's appreciated and it's encouraged and one of the techniques that they use in the grade schools is to induce um, psychic ability through mm -hmm. hypnosis through suggestion um, to, to bring it out that way um, so it's present in a lot of different people it's just uh, it just kind of sits there based on a person's perspectives uh, about it their belief systems their environment um, and the fact that China has so many um, very talented psychics um, that can do amazing things, that poses a threat potentially to... That was my next question, so where are we yeah. going with that? Yeah. Um, because they have people that can remotely start fires, they have people that can influence electronics remotely, mm -hmm. um, they have people that can read files remotely, in the early stages of the Stanford Research's Institute's, mm -hmm. uh, institute's um, development of remote viewing, they had a remote viewer named Pat Price. And one of the practice uh, trial sessions was to view uh, 
a very secret military facility um, in Virginia. And uh, he did, and he actually got into one of the filing cabinets and started reading the names off the file folders. And the agency that had tasked that experiment to right. see, does this really work, um, got pretty worried at that point. And of course, they made, have, made sure that everyone, you know, um, signed agreements that they would never reveal any of the information. That's right, and yeah. <laughs> now, can you clarify something for me here? Mm -hmm. Now, we mentioned the word sensitive earlier. Now, some of, of some of us sensitives, we can go to a grocery store, and the minute we get a little frustrated, we interfere with the equipment, yeah. um, like the cash writers say, and not meaning to do that. Um, how easy would it be to mistake something like that for what you're talking about and be targeted as a threat? Mm. You mean, um, you mean a, a person just has unusual uh, experience with electronics and then they think they're being targeted, or? Uh, no, I, I think what I was asking, some sensitives, mm -hmm. uh, including myself, sometimes I will go to a store. Right or somewhere and set off something. Okay. And and then everybody and I said, Well excuse me, let me step back for a minute and and so I can just step back two or three steps and mm -hmm. everything's wonderful again. Yeah. And then, you know, approach it again. And my question was how easy would it be to mistake a sensitive, you know, interfering with equipment and a trained person, how easy could that be mistaken for one for the other where we would represent a threat. That was my question. Um, well, some sensitives are perceived as a threat. And, uh, but usually if there's, if a person or let's say a military facility experiences mm -hmm. something unusual, they'll look for the cause mm -hmm. and then they'll evaluate that, that source. Um, it's fairly easy. Um, for just about anybody that practices remote viewing to find this to find others who do remote viewing. Mm -hmm. Now, if a person practices what's called CRV, controlled remote mm -hmm. viewing, and they stick to the protocols and they know what they're doing, they typically don't leave a trace. They can go to a target, but they don't affect the target. Mm -hmm. um, to be able to affect the target, you have to have that intent, and it does in many cases leave a signature and that trail can be followed back to the person that did it. Mm -hmm. um, that's one reason why CRV was developed so that you know so that uh, a psychic spy could penetrate a facility gather information and it not the be known trace, that they were yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in intelligence gathering work a person wants to use that technique. They don't want to they don't want it known that they were there. Now in a in a situation where you're trying to psychically attack a, you know, like let's say a computer that holds missile launch codes, um, in that case you might leave a trail. But mm -hmm. Lynn Buchanan has also developed a technique to render a person or an object unviewable. Um, mm -hmm. He has a little stone, it's, got, it's carved and it kind of looks like it could be mine or something like that and he calls it the story stone and he challenges anybody and everybody that are willing to uh, to view that stone to tell him where it came from, mm -hmm. you know, to view the history of it. But somehow it's been programmed to generate all these different amazing in-depth detailed stories. So when you tune into the story stone you get this elaborate um, story about where it came from. So it's possible that a uh, highly skilled remote viewer could use that same technique to cloak themselves so that no one could actually identify them positively. They'd just get different stories each time. So. We're not forgetting about you. You want to add something to that? Or are you just going to mm -hmm. cheer us on here? I'll just cheer up. Cheer, cheer us you, on, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, excuse me. The regular person that is looking for this side sort of information, um, where do they start looking? That's a good question, um, because that book is so hard to find. Um, if a person can find it, that's a great source. You know, China's Super Psychics by Paul Dong. Um, any of the books by Paul Dong are excellent. Um, they can go to the conference. They can go to a conference. There's yeah. a Qigong conference coming up in San Francisco the oh, first week it? of November, mm -hmm. and uh, in past conferences, some of the same Super Psychics from China have 
spoken at that conference in San Francisco. Oh, this, is the, this is the fifth annual International Qigong Congress. Um, mm -hmm. So that would be a good source. Um, the internet when, has a lot of garbage, of course. Um, mm -hmm. One of the mistakes that a lot of people are making is they're trying to um, they're trying to new ageify <laughs> this whole yeah. thing, um, and they're talking about indigo children and okay, the aliens are genetically engineering and you know helping people to wake up so that we've got this great wonderful future of you know to mm -hmm. to step up human evolution. That's true to a certain extent. That is going on, mm -hmm. but on a much more limited basis. What's going on in China is it's not aliens. It's it's people. Yeah, it's it, people and scientific. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to inject something here. There is a website. It talks about the, uh, we've covered indigo children, but they are, are the children of ours, and they in this monastery in mm -hmm. Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. And so, but those two are not even related at all. In yeah, no um, shape. There may be. One of the things that keeps coming up with people who practice Qigong, mm -hmm. people who are very psychic, all of these super psychics are also having uh, UFO and alien encounters. Well, you know, maybe not all of them, but many of them, and it's one of the things that's consistently reported. Um, the more one's consciousness expands, the more one's abilities develop, the more likely that person is to have experiences with other things, um, mm -hmm. unexplained things, um, objects appearing and disappearing at random, um, lights in the sky, strange entities. Um, all of those are uh, associated with, uh, you know, enhanced psychedelic. We have a studio audience today, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was a researcher that measured the brainwave patterns of abductees in Brazil, and they found that abductees in Brazil had a four times higher amplitude of their brain waves. Their brains just were m much more awake and they produced a lot more electricity. So they had an enhanced state of consciousness. So then the question is, did they experience that because of their abductions or were they having the abductions because they... Because of that. Right. So I don't think that that question has really been resolved yet. Um, I'm not sure what that is exactly. I think that um, there's a lot more study needs to be done in that area. But whenever you bring the whole alien issue into the scientific realm, most scientists, of course, get very uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, yeah. And uh, the problem in this country is most scientists are so narrowly focused on their one little thing. And you've got all these different scientists that are trying to you know, duplicate everybody else's work that's already been done. No one really wants to put all the pieces together and look at the whole. So they say, okay, well, you know, this is that and that's this, but nobody's looking at the big picture. Um, the Chinese are looking at the big picture. They have mainstream UFO studies that are going on. Um, many, there's, there's dozens of different uh, scientific institutions that are actually studying. Actually, a hundred. Yeah. How many? A hundred. Over a hundred. Over a hundred. There's actually over a hundred. Yeah, in one project there was a hundred different institutions that were involved that volunteered mm -hmm. to do this work, and it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're looking at the whole bigger picture, and they're looking at it from a lot of different perspectives. So they're way ahead of us as far as, you know, the U.S. in this, in mm -hmm. this area. Um, and they take the UFO issue very seriously. It's not something that's, you know, that's poo-pooed and, and set off to the side of, you know, as being just too weird. So that that's important um, because the Chinese have taken psychic ability seriously because yeah. they are developing um, large numbers of psychic people that's going to have an impact on their culture, on their society, on their economic development, on their military development. And this country really needs to pay more attention to that. Um, why, why do you suppose that we, as Americans, are, are changing that? Um, I'm going to offend a lot of people, but because we're fat, okay, lazy, well, and stupid. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Because we're comfortable. Um, yeah. Because our culture is one of consumption. It's not about um, integrity. It's not about honor, loyalty, compassion. The American culture is about 
getting your own, you know. I want my million. I want to be comfortable. I want to want, you know, it's all about me, me, me. Um, and our children are programmed from the time that they're little with all of this crap on television. You know, they're subjected to just enormous amounts 